Welcome to this service of Christian worship. My name is Reverend John Van Nuys. I'm the pastor of Wabash Avenue Presbyterian Church in Crawfordsville, Indiana. And on behalf of our governing body, the session, our deacons, and our church family, I welcome you to this virtual Christian worship service. Although we are separated spatially, we are one and we are together spiritually. The scriptures tell us that we are one in Christ and that oneness transcends physical limitations and temporal displacements. So where two or more are gathered, God is present. God is here, you are here. And as I imagine on the other side of the screen, there are some familiar faces known to me and some new faces that I perhaps, uh, who I do not know. I look forward to getting to know you after uh, this wonderful trial that we are going through is past. Let us now come before the Lord in worship. Our call to worship comes from Psalm 119, verses 105 and 111. Your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Your word, O God, is our heritage forever, the joy of our hearts. Our opening hymn is sung by our choir director, Jenny Fights Swick. to the
speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet the birds hush their singing and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known I'd stay in the garden Hear now the call to confession. God not only calls us to repentance, but God also assures us of forgiveness. Therefore, let us confess our sins to God who is love. Let us join together in our prayer of confession. Gracious God, our sins are too heavy to carry, too real to hide, and too deep to undo. Forgive what our lips tremble to name, what our hearts can no longer bear, and what has become for us a consuming fire of judgment. Set us free from a past that we cannot change. Open to us a future in which we can be changed, and grant us grace to grow more and more in your likeness and image through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now continue to offer our prayers of confession in silence. Amen. Receive the declaration of pardon. Hear the good news through the obedient life, the suffering death and the glorious resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord, God has forgiven us. Christ is risen, Christ reigns, Christ reconciles you to God. By grace you are forgiven, you are restored, you are loved. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Let us join together in our prayer for illumination. O oh God, be thou our vision as we open our hearts to your word given today. Amen. Our gospel lesson today comes from Luke chapter 6, verses 31 through 36. So listen now for God's word as it speaks to you. Jesus taught the disciples, saying, Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love them that love them. If you do good 
to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies. Do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High. For God is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I've lived at my apartment complex now for many years, and I became good friends with one of the longtime maintenance workers. He was a great guy, always in a good mood, always glad to fix anything, always kind. Last year, he left, and now there's a different maintenance guy who's assigned to my apartment building. He's, he's different. He's always in a bad mood. He's always bothered about fixing anything. Recently, he came up to me and said, your truck's leaking. It's leaving a huge spill in your parking space. I replied, I know it's got a rear differential seal that's leaking. I'm sorry about that. Well, you need to clean it up. You need to get some kitty litter to soak up that differential fluid. And then once it's all soaked up, you need to scoop up the litter and then you need to put it in the dumpster. Remembering all my other neighbors and their leaking vehicles and all of their parking spaces with oil stains and drips and all that, I thought, why is he picking on me? But I took a deep breath, I counted to 10, I smiled and I said, I'll get right on that. I told him that about a month ago. Funny how I just seemed to kind of forget to do that. On Sunday night, my toilet handle broke. It wouldn't flush. So on Monday morning, I called the apartment office and put in a maintenance request with the leasing agent. She's always there, she's always cheerful, she's a delight. After leaving the call order with her, I was about to leave home and it occurred to me that my request would be given to Mr. Cheerful Maintenance Man who'd fix the toilet while I was away. I also remembered the mess but I immediately thought, that's not my problem, let him fix it. And it hit me, a voice, a still small voice within my consciousness said, John, wait, aren't you the one who's always preaching about being a peacemaker? Well, yeah. Then why don't you practice what you preach and do something to create peace right now. That thought stopped me dead in my tracks. I sighed, I hung my head, and I silently said, point taken, thank you, Lord. Thank you for calling me out on my crud. Please forgive me. Then I went into my kitchen I got out the biggest pot I had, I filled it full of water, I carried it into the bathroom, and I manually flushed the toilet. What was I thinking? The answer is, I was thinking about getting even. If you give as good as you get, says Jesus, how can you even begin to follow me? If you savor grudges, if you relish retribution, if you are all about keeping score, then how can you belong to the God who refuses to keep score? If you are merciless, how can you be a child of the Most High who is merciful? 
or to put it another way, and more bluntly, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Translation, you don't get any vengeance. Reflecting on this, Paul adds, if you receive hostility, respond with humility. If someone is always mad, you always be gentle. Do not be overcome with evil. Instead, be overflowing with love. If your heart is full of love, there is no room for hate. Imagine how different the world would be if we all lived that way. That being said, leave the world to God. You focus on you. Keep your heart clean and your conscience clear. And your scorebook, well, just throw your scorebook away. Don't keep score. Instead, keep close to Christ. Do what he does. Then you will be like he is. Then you'll really be alive. Recovery groups advocate taking what they call a searching and fearless moral inventory of our lives. What if you did that, examining all your relationships? If you did that, what would you find? Jesus clearly states what has got to go if we want to go anywhere with him. Jesus also makes it clear what we need to keep if we are to keep company with him. We're to keep things in our heart like patience, kindness, humility, gentleness, generosity, forbearance, and peace which are all forms of love. The good news is that we don't have to waste any time involved with anything less holy, less satisfying, or less good than love. Everyone you know is going through some kind of struggle. Life challenges us all. It's hard to be a human being. My friend, the always kind maintenance worker who doesn't work at the apartment complex anymore, he doesn't work there anymore because last year they cut staff. They let him go. I'd forgotten that. No wonder the current maintenance man is always grumpy. He now has to cover more apartment units. He's probably constantly pulling his hair out, never having enough time to do everything, and having to do all that in the middle of a pandemic. Maybe he isn't a jerk after all. Maybe he's a decent guy under enormous pressure who's just trying to do his job. Maybe I should cut him a break. Maybe. I shouldn't judge him. Maybe on my way home, I should pick up that kitty litter. Let us pray. Let us unite our hearts in prayer, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the church throughout the world, that we may renew our faith and strengthen our witness to our Savior, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the governments of the world and its leaders and all in positions of authority, especially our President Donald, our Governor Eric, and our Mayor Todd, that they may serve the common good and lead us all safely out of this pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our planet Earth, that all people may be good stewards of its resources, share in its abundance, protect its life, and preserve creation for all future generations, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
for the poor and the stranger, that they may receive refuge, welcome, and hope, and that they may receive your love through our compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the sick and those in distress, for their families and all who are combating the coronavirus, that your healing may abound, restoring us all to the fullness of health, life, and joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our neighbors, that we may live together in peace and help one another, making sure that everyone has enough to live. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our enemies, that they may receive good things, and that we, your servants, may not return evil for evil, but that we may work humbly and eagerly to further your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, we ask your blessing upon these persons and concerns which we now name silently before you. Almighty God, receive these prayers we offer and by the power of your Holy Spirit, make us faithful, joyful witnesses to our Savior, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is sung by Jenny Fights Swift.
receive now the charge and the benediction. Let us all go out into God's world, keeping social distancing, of course, but let us all go out and practice peace. Let us treat others the way we want to be treated. Let us turn the other cheek and let us turn toward our God who offers a new way of living in our Savior's Easter kingdom that is available to us all right now. It leads to peace. It leads to joy. It is full of love. So let us go forth. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord turn a shining face toward you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.